Okay, so let's let's start here. So if we go to my log, this continuing large 3D printer, working page, working doc, uh, we can go into that. Now let's talk about what we do today. So we we we're moving forward right along on the axes, and that's that's really good. They work. I mean, the attachment to the frame is solid. Uh, we're sticking the rods up, in fact, as spool holders since they're nine feet. Thing is quite sizable. Um, yeah, I mean the axes seem to be going. We've got the the belt clips to finish. So Holger was doing the metal version. Which I think is going to work. How many did you make of those? Oh, just one. I wanted just to one set. If you, I can go we in can mass production at a test it at short notice. Yeah, we're going to mass produce more belt clips. The pegs themselves to attach to one side of the belt that works, right? We don't have questions about that. Uh, we print can we printed some smaller ones or do we just keep in the large ones or? Uh, haven't uh, we can any smaller ones. Okay, we can. Uh, looks like we can use the large ones too. So, what are some of the next steps? So, mass production on the axes. There's two more on the Z with the with the solid rods, mm -hmm. and then there's three axes for the X Y Y perpendicular to that. Well, on the other sides and then spanning for the bed but before we do any of that let's uh, get the controller right out to see if we can drive one axis and then four of them how do you drive four you can do in series yeah, you can wire it in not series parallel, but, yeah. um, not parallel no. No. so in series one but you have to rewire it a little bit like um, we'd have to rewire it and how do we do it just mechanically use the cat5 wire uh, mechanically speaking I mean that's the whole thing just like um, making soldering a few connections but useful wire for that is the cat5 don't split it just keep that bundle of eight and let's do so we need about four up to four amps per motor so we can do like two wires so each wire gets you four sets of two so we just connect two right. they're kind of thin they're rated for two amps enclosed but they are actually rated for more like four amps unenclosed um, basically like wires like if you have a single wire it can handle like double the power as opposed to you having it in a bundle of wires but just for safety let's do like let's solder together two um, so we've got the white wires going to one motor to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. So there's some wiring there. Like we should put the controller on the one side between the two Z axes. Uh, but they actually have to go like, well actually it should be closer to one side because it's gonna go through one, through the second, and just continues to wrap around to the third and a fourth. But let's take a look at the wiring there. So at the universal controller. Um, People are discussing kind of back and forth series Serial versus parallel, I mean... Uh, so here's the advantages and disadvantages. In series, you can run one stepper driver for four motors. Because you're putting out four amps at max, each motor gets up to four amps. If you were in parallel, you're dividing that, you'd need 16 amps. Those controllers are not 16 amps. So the only way you can do it, if you use one driver, um, even if you use two drivers, you'd need four drivers. You'd basically need to multiplex a single output of the ramps to four of the large stepper drivers. Well, let's just use one and do it in series. That's an easier way to do it. So the idea of series is that you get less voltage. But how much voltage do we have and how much voltage do the motors require? Well, we have 24 volts. Uh, we probably have some 36 volt power supplies too and 48 but 24 volts gets you 4 volts per mo 6 volts per motor so how much do you need to drive a stepper motor is the question they don't care much about voltage That's not so much it could be like 6 and up I think is quite good so if you look at for example the in our bill of material uh, let's do the Amazon source. So let's take a look at one of the kind of motors we have and look at their voltage requirements. We can actually look at specs. It's NEMA 24, right? Yeah, NEMA 23. 
So NEMA 23, and it's uh, what shows up on Amazon. Yeah, these ones. 2.3. <clears throat> 4 .2 amp. Uh, what's their? They're the version which has 420. That's not the one we have. That one is 425 ounce inch. Uh, we've got. I believe it's this one. Um, I think it's this one, but let's see if that's the one. That looks short. Yeah, it's also 2.8. Oh, uh, maybe. That's not. That's like. Yeah, you can trust the pictures necessarily. Yeah, true. 2.8 amp. It's the lower. We actually do have the lower amp one. I do believe this is the one. Well, we could go to. Where's our. The picture's wrong, man, though, right? Let's go back. Yeah, the picture might be wrong. Okay, so D3D CNC torch table, that same ones uh, that we used last time. I guess, uh, yeah, the. This. 19 this one that we used. That's the same motors there. So what do we do here? Let's look at what we have for NEMA 23. Yeah, these ones. These ones. That's um, one. So we did not get, I know we did not get these much strong, the 425, because their current is a little high, it's four. Okay, that's not that. But if you notice, the last one was said like 4.2 amps. These drivers are rated for like 4, so we're kind of like pushing it. So going to the next one. Okay. Um, so it is the 1.9 Newton meter. 269 ounce inch holding torque. What does that mean? So let's just look at if we're okay. I, and on the page there here, I put 17 inch pounds at a quarter inch radius. In other words, you're pulling with a force of 17 times four. That's actually quite more than I said, I said 50. And why did I say 50? So this is more 68 pounds per when I said 50 I meant the work safe working strength of belt you could do more okay it'll start stretching or I mean it's won't have the infinite lifetime like it should but we can definitely do like 68 that's what this thing has so in fact our bed we can probably move it with one stepper motor like this possibly we've got four we should be all good but that's what we're talking about and their amperage as here, it was only 2.8, so we're well within the specs of the stepper driver, and it's called the TB6600 stepper driver. It's standard. Uh, you can get it for like eight bucks from AliExpress. There's an open source version of that too, so if you want to build it on a circuit. Open source TB6600. This is GitHub documented. This is all good. This is legit. Uh, take a look at this. This is from the Fab Lab. So you can build one of these too. Uh, it's the same thing. It's the same, same that long chip there. That's the logic unit there. It needs a big heat sink and all that. That's what's doing the switching. But you can do it, but here you get, got it all packaged up like this from Amazon for eight dollars. Get it. So the question is how do you wire motors in series? And first how do you wire up the stepper, the large stepper drivers at all? 
So we go to the universal controller. And here's the <clears throat> is what it looks like. So I mean that's just conceptually speaking here. What are you doing? What's happening here? So we've got this system. You see you understand the bottom completely. That's exactly what we're doing. We took off the small stepper drivers from the ramps. And we use three wires per there's like three wires and they connect to the TB6600 and the TB6600 are powered by this larger power supply because now we need 2.8 times 4 no, it's times 7 3 times 7 about 20 amp 21 amps so we have to have a power supply that's like over 20 amps like 30 amp power supply because um, they're all on at the same time once you engage them, they just stay on whether they're moving or not. They're using energy. So you're using 30 amps times um, 24 volts. That's actually quite a bit of power. You're already using 30 amps times 24. That's like 700 watts right there for the motors that are just on the whole time you're printing. So that actually gets to be an energy sink. Um, takes a bit of energy to do that. Compared to the small ones, the small ones use like NEMA. Um, Oh yeah, but actually, yeah, that's about, it, it, won't, it won't be like 720, it's not that much, it's maybe like 50, <coughs> 50 watts each or so. The tiny ones, they're only like 5 or 10, 10 watts, like 5 watts or so. So like the small printers we have, they're much more energy efficient. This, this now you're getting to much stronger motors, much, much more energy requirements. So we need this separate power supply, but we actually have this whole setup already. We, we have this. This is from the torch table. It's sitting in the shelf. So we can actually take this out. You got three stepper drivers. Uh, is that enough for us? It's no, those, those are just connectors, right? The those are the connectors on the stepper blocks. driver. Yeah. You see that? I mean, well, oh, okay. okay. It, they're black, so you can't, you can gotcha. hardly see them. Yeah. But that's doing the logic for moving the drivers. It's more, uh, I mean, it, it's more than, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, we need well, it's not energy. just logic, it's doing logic and power. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> so well, the logic cool. is coming from the Arduino, the power, that's the power handling stage. Uh, the drivers, they're the actual pa power handling stage. The signals are actually coming from the, the Arduino, right? Mm -hmm. um, Arduino's through its library, stepper driver library, it does the very rapid on-off sequence to drive a stepper motor, like at like megahertz or kilohertz scale or whatever. Ah, okay. Yeah. I yeah, thought the green guy doing that. Okay, but I'm just no, they're just handling the power. They're basically transistors. Okay. So the, the green guys are just amplifying the signals. Yeah. 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 Okay. So how's that? Is that Signal enough? Boosters. I mean with X, Y, Z. So this is what we have. Can we use it as is or do we need to add more drivers? Well the extruder is missing more. X, Y, Z is doing the green guys, but oh, okay. it's driving the extruder. Ah, so on our system we're going to have to plug in the first one there, which is the extruder. You see that one, that's the extruder driver. That we still need. The, this one. For the motors, is one power supply enough to supply all seven. Six or seven? We have to have 30 amps. If we don't have 30 amps, we're going to need to use two power supplies. But that we should have that. That should be a 30 amp, 24 volt power supply, which would be good enough. Uh, each of them we said uses 2.8. So exactly more exactly 2.8 times 7 is 19.6 so we're just good with a 20 amp power supply um, however we're actually better than that because we're saying that 2.8 amps when in series that's all you're using so you're actually using 3 well we're using so the 
let's go to the diagram because there's different ways to do it. But actually, because we have three drivers, how many can we drive per? What did we just say? A little wire, a little while, while ago. Just how many can we drive? We got 24 volts. Motors need how much? Like for example, for this. Um, Well, let's see. Duplicate. We had the. Do we have any indication of how much voltage these kinds of things need? It'll. Uh, we can Google that. What I found when I Google it was 3.2 volts. Okay. Each phase draws 2.8 amps at 3.2 volts, along for a holding torque of 19 kilograms or 207 ounce per inch. So each phase, right? Okay. Each phase, and there's two phases. So it looks like we need about. 3.2 volts times 2 looks like we need about 6 volts I think I think but anyway so if we're getting <coughs> we're just we're saying you can probably run four stepper motors out of one of these yeah 6 times 4 it's 24 and we have a 24 volt supply. And do each theoretically makes sense to me, but I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. don't understand enough. And do each step motor, so there's clusters of step motor that work together. And there's four of them that work together for one axis. For Z, there's four. For Z. Z is the worst. So you can run all of those off of one of those boards. Are they all connected individually yeah. inside the, the stepper driver? Series. So we'll get to that next. Okay. That, that means that four wires are coming out of the stepper driver. They're going to one motor and it's kind of splits, but splits in a weird way. You got to follow where the phases are and all that. But it's easy. We got a diagram, so um, we already figured that part out. Um, so yes, you can run four out of the. Let's let's call these X, Y, and Z in that order. So this last Z, which is plugged into there, that's the Z. We're gonna run four in series out of that one for the Y. We're going to run two in series or in parallel if we wired up another one. Let's just run them in series two because then we don't need an extra driver here. So we can run them in series. And then for the X, there's one. For the extruder, we can use the tiny one. We still have the same stepper motor on the extruder. So we're doing kind of hybrid one, one small and the th three other ones are large. Cool. So now, uh, we got the power supply, we got this, we got this 24 volt power supply here. We know that this is already fixed up for 24 volt operation because we already ran this. Uh, we might want to check on that, that diode is snipped there just in case. But this should be a 24 volt system. Well, actually, actually, ah, no, 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 look at that. It says 12 volts, 1 amp. No, 24 volt. I don't know. Uh, this this power supply does both 12 and 24. Mm -hmm. yeah, so 24 2 amps. Lower. Yeah. So just want to oh, verify that if we're running on 24, which is that's what we want to do. Like for 12 amps, we would not support the extruder heater. We want to still support the extruder heater without burning out the board. The same logic applies here. So we got to be running 24. Let's make sure that diode is snipped. Now here we might have been running 12 because the torch table does not have that. We use this for the torch table. And that does not have the heater, so we could get away with 12 volts for a long life the operation. Small power supply is essential for the Arduino, correct? And the big guy yeah. at, the, at the top left is, is for the, yeah. the drivers. And now the small guy is also for the heater. Okay. Well, heat bed? Not heat bed. Okay. Extruder. No, ah, extruder. Extruder plus one stepper motor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yep, because that thing has four amps, which is basically like, yeah, one amp. Well, it's less than one amp per. Yeah, this power supply is just matched for what we have on a small system. It's just good enough. Um, okay, so now let's talk about wiring TB6600 or just wiring steppers in series. That would be on a wiki.
okay, just called wiring stepper motors in series. How do you do that? Okay, what's the simplest way to understand it? Um, there's two things. One, how do you wire TB60? This is the second one. Let's let's take a look at first how we wire a single one. So for TB6600, we want to look at how do you wire a single one. So let's go to TB. This is your diagram. So this is the important one. Uh, let's put that into the diagram, into our working doc. So working doc, let's start a page on wiring. And that's editable. Uh, go into the doc if you want to, to edit. It's in the chat. Okay, so wiring. Are you unmuted, Marston? Am I? Uh, I don't know. It's like here. Uh, no, I'm. I look, I'm speaking there. Okay. I'm recording this, so it's getting recorded, too. So you, you need to do things. One, one is how do you wire? So wire a TB6600 and then wire that in series. So step one. And that was. So this, this is what, that's a good diagram there. And that's tested. And then the second one is wire in series, wire steppers in series. And that's here. So let's, let's go through both and then let's get out there. because we want to see these things move like pretty quickly. We just got to do those wires. Um, I mean, we'll start with one. Just start once and just make that thing move and make sure we know what we're doing and you'll see how much force it has. It actually has quite a bit of force on it. So, um, this, okay. So you'll see that, let's zoom in on that. So what's going on there? This, the little driver would be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pins. So you you can recognize this on a board. Just follow this diagram. So this, let's call them like pin one through eight on top, and continuing maybe nine through sixteen on the bottom. So pin eight here, this black one, goes into pull step direction enable. That's ground. Um, this one, which is like 15, goes into this one. These are labeled with these labels. Pulsing, you got to pulse this thing, you got to give it a direction, you got to enable it, meaning turn it on. So there's three wires, three sets of wires, and then the, the three black are ground. So that's the ground connection. Well, the three ones are so called this purple nine, that's enable. 15 is going to be your pulse or step. And then 16 is going to be your direction. So that's exactly what you do. That that is the signals coming from the ramps. Any comments on that, Ken? You did that. Yeah, um, just the numbering. If you if you start from one to eight, nine should be one across, and then 16. Okay. Rather than one across. So cool. it's not one eight uh, nine sixteen. Yeah, it's one eight. Nine, okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. So eight, nine, ten, sixteen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. That's good. And you know, this is up and down, like the the plug is on the bottom left hand corner. Just make sure it's not you don't have this mm -hmm. one eighty. So that's that. That's the signal side. That's the signals that are coming out of the Arduino. So basically this ramps board is like a pass through. It, the Arduino actually sends the signals uh, and it drives the steppers through libraries like Arduino 
libraries that are used to drive steppers mm -hmm. at so like kilohertz. Since, since we have an enable, maybe it's, it cuts power to the motors uh, if they're not used yeah. potentially? Okay. Yeah, that's probably what it does, yeah. Um, now, the, high, the other side is high voltage. So if we actually look at Amazon, like a close up of Amazon, t so you can uh, take a look at this one. Well, no, TB. You'll see the labels on it pretty clearly. So you look at, see that? It's there. Oh, actually, but look at that. It, it's not the same order. Like enable here is on top. That was on the bottom in our picture. So just look at the labels. Labels are correct. So just make sure. Make sure you. To, to those. Yeah. Use the diagram. Use the. <laughs> yeah. Follow the diagram. Like follow the labels <laughs> on the diagram. Like pulse. Like the enable was on top here. So Are just pay attention to that. <laughs> okay. And then on the high voltage side, the other side, that's the actual power handling side. So here it has the B, A, and ground and so forth. Here it's, yeah, it's once again, it's different. So just read the label and connect it accordingly. Uh, Ken, any comments on that? Yeah, so I think it's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. So on the DC, sorry, are we done? Or yeah. yeah. So on the DC minus and the DC plus, those go to the power supply. Mm -hmm. where it comes out power supply. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, for the AABV, they will just step motors, but those should be double then. So use the cast. Yeah, double the wires. Mm -hmm. yeah, Two wires. One. Now, how do you tell what is A and B on a motor? <coughs> All you need to know is that the adjacent wires, like if you have the four wires on a motor, yeah. they'll connect to the same motor. Like this connects to the same winding, and this connects to the same winding. So as long as you keep it in the pairs, like it shows here, it will go like if that says a plus minus plus minus, it goes in that order, and the pairs are paired. Mm, yeah. So that's what you got here: but pair A and pair B. Is there any indication on the stepper motors which ones? Which no, mm -hmm. so just it only has the visible order of four prongs on a plug. It should be the same order as it is on the. Yeah. And, and it must be the same order where you plug it in, where and where it goes into the motor. It's not like you're not crossing any wires. Yeah. Now, if the direction, printer, yeah, same same as with a small printer. So, what about the direction? You can't tell that offhand because it's a geometrical thing. It depends on how you set up your system, where the belt peg is, if it's on one side or another. That means it goes either up or down. That we can figure out <coughs> if we find that this does not work. You have to, yeah, flip the. It's not as easy as plugging in because here you just have to screw down the terminal. But yeah, you have to basically flip all the wires in that order. Does that make sense? Yeah, reverse the order. Reverse the order. Keep the order where reverse it. Now. <laughs> So the same. We have to figure it out once. Plus, minus, Not plus for all minus, the four motors. But just. Uh -huh. no. okay. We only need to do that once. Why? Because mechanically we set up all the z axes. Like if the belt peg is on the right hand side, like it is on the first axis we did, the belt peg must be on the right hand side on the other if they're going to. The motors have to go on, all in the same direction. So you have to make it on the right hand side, right hand side. And then when we go around to the other side, it's going to also be on the right hand side when you're looking at it from the front, from the outside. Always make the belt peg mm -hmm. on the right hand side. And that way all the motors are going to be moving the same direction. So that's all. So we'll get to it. But now the trick is how do you, how do you understand this thing in series? So let's take a look at... Um, Take a, there's a good picture. <clears throat> well, no, let's. I mean, it's just for like no, let's study base, this. You gotta hard. understand this picture right here. What's going on there? Because we can go look at the diagrams and stuff. But 
if you look at um, a single face it's not too hard i guess it's, it's really if you look at this you'll see the logic in there so say that's the the single one so this is two in series coming out of one driver will, so say this is your driver side we'll make a four in series too hmm? right? we're gonna make a four version four series that. right so this is two now you got to continue this pattern so you have to understand what this pattern is so what is this pattern this pattern is so say that's the black is the first one. let's take that's pin one let's actually maybe copy this into our work doc so we're um, so what's going on there um, well let's let me extract that a little better I'm gonna do a uh, picture just enlarge this so we see where the wires are connecting. That's pretty weird. I don't understand. Right, right. So we'll get to understand that yeah, in a second. Now we can just follow one series. I mean, follow just follow the A and then just follow the B because they're independent. There is a pattern. We have to identify what that pattern is, so so that every one of us can get it independently. And we're going to call that. Do we have to? Let's call this one. One. It's in the chat. So take pin one. Yeah. Sure, but the orange ones don't, they don't get power from the from the main. They're just connected to each other. Right. So oh, okay. So the other thing is to look at stepper motor. So let's look at inside the motor what it looks like. <coughs> Um, it needs uh, an open circuit between those two. So, um, I don't know, like this is a, this kind of diagram is useful. Just, just copy and paste one of them just to, to understand that there's two windings, but they're connected in, like they're, two, two are connected and two are connected. Sorry. So let's just copy this for reference, just just as a reference point. That's kind of how it looks. So this is what we've got. Okay, so we've got pin one. So let's just trace where the power goes. If you're gonna have, okay, so here's the logic. If you've got multiple ones, you're connecting the same phase down the road. So uh, let's, so if you're connecting, so here, phase, let's call that phase A. Let's call that A. A connects to A prime. They're not gonna, so that's, let's call it A and B. Um, Let's call it B prime. And if one person's confident on this, we can like do this immediately. Like I would, what I would do is I would take out the controller, check it out, and connect one motor. Another person could be making up these wires. So A to A prime. Point is, A connects to A prime. If you have more, A connects to A prime to A double prime, A triple prime. You can stack however many you want down a series as long as you have enough voltage to run them. Let's, how do you connect A to A prime? So the way it works is you're connecting that back to here. If you understand that, then you kind of know how to do this. And then a prime, if there's two, then this would be going back to your, that's your other pair in your pair of wires for that winding. So that, uh, so here, let's, uh, let me draw uh, like one pair of windings would be, I'm going to put this in red.
So that's one connection. That's the second connection. That's one pair. See what I did? You go through one phase into the beginning of the next one and then back. So the end of one phase goes into the beginning of the next one. Yeah. Uh, so let's go slide to the next duplicate that slide. That red dot is so is four motors. Dot. Yeah. Um, is there any oh, that's a pair of wires. That's the two physical wires you got. The red dots. Okay, now I sort of get it because these two are collaborating. Yeah. Not the red and the black. It's it's these two. Yeah. So if one face goes in here. It comes out this one. It goes to the next one, which is in the same position. Yeah. So let's go. Let's go to. I'm gonna make the next page, which shows four. So now we're gonna stack the complexity here. We're gonna do four of them. So now But before we do that the little test is how do we connect B? Can somebody somebody edit it? Someone got a computer could edit it. it goes to the Connect. Show me where the two wires, right? how they come out of A and B. Okay. Well, I'll do it. So you got the second pair of wires. Was out there. Was in there. So that's like your first one. That's the output that that goes into the B. And then this no, back up. comes out here. That's your second pair of wires. So I'll, I'll color, color them like another color here. Yeah, I guess. Well, went to the other page. Yeah, I need some time to redraw. So I'm going to color these two as maybe blue. But that's the second pair of wires. Mm. You know, you have the diagram for the, I think it's the 12 inch, 12 inch bed uh, printer. Where is it? Uh, yeah. I think the diagram shows it. It's here. Oh, where is that now? Uh, is this here? Or uh, it's under D3D? Okay. The 18 inch or 12 inch? Um, I did it for my 12 inch. The, the one with the 4 Z axis. Yeah, that would be this one. Um, yeah, here. You're talking about this, this maybe? Uh, it's actually, it, well, not the photo, but the diagram. It's, uh, it shows you how to connect the, the four motors on series. I wanted, I wanted to see this in the wiring input. Maybe it's on... Uh, I'm sure it's somewhere on the internet. That's guaranteed. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, it's on the wiki. So, uh, Pro 2. So we need to add this to our, there we go. We need to add this to how to wire motors in series.
to edit. So I added that to this page here. Yeah, this diagram and that's it. Um, yeah, it's all there. But do you see it? You connect. If you got one phase, you continue that to the next one, next one, next one. And then the green, it returns. Now the second phase, it's the red one. It, so actually the useful thing to show here is that uh, inside they're actually connecting so uh, I'm gonna draw that so I think this would help it so basically here you've got this connecting to that it keeps it goes through the motor but it connects there and it this is the motor this is the spool it's not that you're gonna connect it like it's by connecting it yeah, going through the motor. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it. So if you can understand this, you can do this. I mean, just follow this picture. But, but understand the logic, because this requires manual dexterity or just like manual, like physical reality and logic at the same time. So you kind of have to do that. And some people don't do that. So, um, or it's like tough to learn that because you using like multiple parts of your brain which we're skilled away from doing typically no it's not complex it's yeah mm -hmm. uh, so that's it to do this and then what else we got here wire preparation so I actually lined up how to do this and just that's all the steps step by step trace oh this is it right here this is what you need to look at first yeah yep um, that's it questions let's get out there uh, one question uh, just curious um, the the small motors that we used before uh, they are four times less powerful than the motor on the big guy, at uh, the torque, I mean. Can you what, do the, what do the numbers say? I'm, it's, it's like half a newton meter or whatever for the small motor. And, and was it two newton meters for the big one or something? Uh, I, I remember this ounce inch thing because... Yeah, but, but I think it's... it's 72 it's compared to 269. Okay. So 269... Okay. Yeah. I just would like to know if you can kind of derive that how... Divide know, by 72. How that... You got 3.7 times more torque, more force holding ability. But the big guy so is a lot bigger, or seems, uh, you know. I'm just wondering, how does it relate? I mean... I don't know, it's like, is the big okay. one four of the small ones? It's probably about that. Okay. It's probably quite linear there. So here, but I'm just gonna say... with the physics? That's what I'm kind of struggling or I mean... How would you derive that, I mean... <coughs> With a, a fourth, how do you call it? Like a rough estimate? Uh, you're looking at uh, like cross sectional areas and magnetic flux, and it's like I would say flux would scale because it's three dimensional, it would should scale as cubic, so you should in principle have like a cubic ratio of power. But it's not because it's like more like four times the size for four times. It should be like eight times the size. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, um, it should not be as, if it were four times as large, it would mean it should have 64 times more. But so I, I don't know. Okay, I just wondered yeah. because you're usually working like this, I guess. So that's why I wanted to pry open your brain, basically. <laughs> Yeah, it gets more complicated than simple. Well, you have basic principles, but 
this kind of stuff is like flux simulations, which actually do exist in FreeCAD. Like, for example, the guys from the Axial Wind Turbine Project, Kostas from Greece, he's working on a simulator in FreeCAD. And that's already available to get, here's you calculate power for your windmill using magnetic flux calculations. So if you want to see that, yeah. No, never made it here. No, this, this is our plan. This is our 50 kilowatt universal rotor on a pole. <laughs> That's all. <Okay. laughs> the other stuff is uh, elsewhere. But um, we can use the same, the same universal rotor we are using right now and make a big structure like this. So do it's this. Like, this is pretty cool. Motor, yeah. yeah. And then you got a hydraulic it's tube going down, down to the ground so you yeah. don't have the, the sensitive components up high. They're all robust components up there. So this is lifetime design. Anyway. Um, <coughs> Questions? Let's get out there. Um, just a, a question about the extruder. Which extruder are we using? Are we using the same? Mm -hmm. Yeah, same size head. Tiny, tiny same tiny little thing? <laughs> it's Only five. It's, gonna, so, it's not so gonna, cute. Gonna it's so cute. Yeah, but the, the next steps are put four of them and put nine of them and then put the super volcano. If we had some time, we can put the super volcano on it and start driving. Uh, super volcano, twenty four times faster. Just out. Uh, bigger heater blocks, but we do have the heater block in the. If we have any time, but I mean we're we're out of time. We don't have anybody out there, so. Uh, but we do have the large heater block, which gets you not five pounds, but twenty pounds per day. So that's getting into production. Yeah. Uh, so I mean we're doing step by step. Do? Twenty pounds per day. That is pounds the, of plastic per day. That's the super. I thought you just said that's the large block. Yeah, large block, the that's super that's, volcano. Oh, that well, that is the super volcano. The volcano is what we're using now. Super volcano is like that long for the heater block. Yeah. And it's got twice the heating power. It's like 80 watts instead of 40. Yeah. And we can scale that probably to maybe a little more, like 100 or 120. Well, so you could probably get like 30. Um, yeah. But we have do have. I mean, this is interesting stuff. This is future work here, but scalable. Uh, scalable heater block because we do everything that's scalable study this put a few of the small ones that we use right now together and do this mm -hmm. this would completely do it mm -hmm. just use a big long screw yeah and then there's <laughs> details there's details to how you gotta that's do this and, and the reason that is increasing productivity is because basically you just have a bigger liquid reservoir and you're able to deliver more You can move heat. it quicker. So yeah. it's got more surface area of interaction with heating it up. Well the PLA needs 180 degrees to yeah. move. So you can move a larger amount of it quickly and then shoot it. Yeah. For this, they have bolts that already have like small holes through them, weak yeah. holes. So take that, take a long one like this, mm -hmm. drill out the middle hole, and you've got your long threaded uh, connector piece. Yep. So there's ways to do it, but yeah, I mean... Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Do they add much weight, these? No, no. not a lot. I mean, the yes. small blocks are pretty small. It makes your head a lot it looks a bit longer. less stable, I mean. <laughs> this would probably work. This is pushing it. Uh, I talked to the guys that do this from E3D. They got this. They basically got, that's the super volcano, 80 watts, but it's one piece. Mm -hmm. It's harder to machine because you got this much longer thing to machine. But then you can think about how do you do common off-the-shelf parts to do the same thing, and you can. They say that probably like 120 would be the limit. 160, you're talking about. I mean, you'd have to have fatter filament uh, because spaghetti pushing spaghetti is the deal. It's a non-Newtonian fluid, it doesn't really behave, it has this high viscosity like on the surface of it, so it gets kind of weird there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's this is where we get into quarter mil million dollar printers. That's part of it. So the high temperature chamber, this, and you're there. So let's see if we can get the axes today and okay. get some motion. Sweet. Step by step. Quarter million dollars today. Okay.
So this is a picture, like you want to take a picture of that with your camera and just that kind of shows it. I'm slapping wires today, that's my job. Okay. Copy that picture to the main document, right? Yeah. Yeah, I linked to it, but we can, yes, we can, we can go this. Um, okay. Control C. Yeah, this is what we got to do. Okay. Alright. Yeah, just do a pair at a time, it should be pretty simple. Yeah. And then uh, TB6600, get a picture of that on your phone. And then you're good to go. Yeah, we just need to wire it once. Not everyone individually, so. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And we need uh, two clusters of two and one cluster of four. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you got the cat. What is cat? Cat five. Why?